Uh, we yeah. talked about you know um, you know coming up through the minors and, and I'm sure some difficult times for you thinking you know you know am I ever going to get to the National Hockey League? We heard a story at dinner last night about the fact that you actually wore your Providence Bruins uh, gitch, which is like the underwear that you guys wear under your gear uh, during the entire season and run last year. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a side story that no one really knew about. Then after Game Seven, I geared down and I kind of just like showed uh the equipment guy and then he told the i don't know someone with the nhl and kind of escalated from there but yeah the year in providence i don't know if we're gonna get right into that but i, I sure. would like i would like to just get the backstory on how like getting loaned out works and shit like that because so many people have no clue like yeah. how you end up there yeah so so basically uh st louis was didn't have a ahl team and uh that summer we knew that and they joined teams with san antonio splitting with colorado and um, we were kind of like, they qualified me, which we weren't sure if they're going to qualify me or not. And um, from there, it's just my, I was like, okay, well, where am I going to play? And yeah. my agent's like, I don't know, you know, we'll figure it out, I guess. And um, he wasn't happy and went to camp, did the, the whole training camp. And, and then I was like the last goalie there. And I think they were just looking for a spot for me. And they were calling. I know they were working to get me on a team, but nothing was coming up. And then... Uh, are, you, are you like a little panicky at this time? Or you just No, like, I'm chilling because I'm getting paid no matter what. Yeah, true. <laughs> so, there you go. Veteran. So I knew... I, knew uh, I mean, it's minor league money, which is whatever, but I knew uh, that... Because I talked to my agent before and he gave me the rundown. And he's like, he's like, yeah, if they try to send you down to the East Coast, you don't have to go. Like, they can only send you to the AHL. And uh, so I'm getting sent down. And I do like... I go into the, the coach's office and it was, I think it was Mike Yo, I don't know, and someone else. And they're like, so uh, we're going to send you down to, to Tulsa. Um, you know, we talked to the coach. The coach is a great guy and, you know, we got it all set up for you. And then in the meeting, so I was like sitting like this. <laughs> and then he told me that and I was just like. <laughs> and then he keeps, go, he keeps going. And uh, I finished the meeting and You're I'm like. more and I'm more. I'm swallowing my words. Because we can go back in the story, but like I had some fire in me from <laughs> two years before from what went down. Yep. And uh, basically, I, I left the room, and then Marty Brodeur, who's like new at, in the management role, comes up and he's, he's talking to me, and he's like, "Hey, so Binner, uh, yeah, like I talked to him. He's a great guy." And I was like, "Listen, Marty, I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm not going." And he's like, "Well, like, you know," he's like, "I think you have to go." And you're saying this to Extent, Martin Brodeur. Yeah. You had enough. Yeah. You, you know what? You know shit. what? This guy. Yeah, I don't want to get into it, but uh, <laughs> great guy, great goaltender. But I was called up a couple years before. He came like out of the chilling at home to take my spot. Took my number. Then this guy sent me down to the cheddar. So I, I was like, <laughs> I ain't doing it. So I was like, no. Nah. But he's a great guy. Like we have a great relationship still. But uh, yeah, from there. I said no. They didn't really know what to do. They went and talked to someone, you know, because I they I, they probably expected me to go. Did they know that you didn't have to? I wonder. I mean, man, it was a really funny scene, <laughs> but I don't want to get into it on here. Is, is that out of character for you, or had you just been so fed up because you knew that you yeah. had it in you, and you yeah. felt like you were getting dicked around, and nobody was taking you seriously? And and you know, no offense to Marty Brodeur, he's a legendary goalie, hockey hall of famer, but you at that point were just like, yo, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. Well, that's where the year in Providence was huge for me because I went there and I kind of got my new respect level back, whereas it kind of got stale in St. Louis. The one I've had in like junior and then like when I first got to pro, I went to Providence and like Boston was just, it was a great, it was a well-run organization and like their management was, was talking to me, the coaching staff was great and I got that new respect and it kind of instilled more belief in me to kind of keep my head down and saying you're doing the right thing you're in the right direction so then I had that belief to where I was confident enough to be like nah like I know I'm better than that I know I'm gonna play somewhere it, it, did, did you think if if maybe things didn't work out in St. Louis that Boston would have been your next location just because of how you'd played for their AHL team uh, potentially there there's potential there like you know but maybe some talks about after your your free agent maybe See, we'll see I'm pretty sure Boston sides. tried to trade for you for the guy that you were splitting time with in Providence. Yeah, right? I don't know if that's 
I'm that's pretty sure true, that's not all. Yeah. No, we're sticking with that narrative and that rumor. So just let's keep it going. Here, okay? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say cooler. too much here. I'm trying to keep. No, you're, you're, the lines. you're doing great. But the thing I, I think you say that makes so much sense is it was finally getting like your bosses to give you some respect. And it, at the time, yeah, your bosses aren't technically uh, in Providence because they're not paying you, but they're still your coaching staff. And you're like, dude, I finally feel good about myself again. Because as much as you tell yourself, you need somebody else to tell you once in a while. For sure. And that was huge for me and the outlook. And then the, the numbers were doing well. I, the record was good. And so they were happy with wins, you know, like any organization, if you're winning for them, everything's smooth. So um, that was great for me. And it was just such the story is really wild to me just the learning experiences and the the built built up you know animosity that i used as kind of fire to drive myself is is uh when i think about that it's uh you know pretty good feeling <laughs>